Okay, so it is my privilege, you guys, to um, bring on my mentor, my business partner, my path changer, and one of my very, very best friends in the whole world. And I just, this guy, you guys, he has so many talents. Like he is so gifted that it's really not fair. <laughs> it's not fair because he has all the talents that a person needs to go out and be someone's best friend, to go out and build a business, to um, go out and change the world and sing, <clears throat> dance, act, and just so many things. I, I just can't even, he has so many talents, it's just unreal. So I'm gonna bring him on tonight. We can talk, we can, um, I'm gonna have him share some things that I think are really important to this business, but we're also going to have a few of our other leaders maybe ask him some questions, get him talking on, on some of the things we know um, that might help you in your business, because that's what we all wanna do here is just help everybody um, thrive and survive in, in this world right now. So with all of that being said, please welcome Mr. Michael Zappia to the screen, please. I'm going to, I'm going to spotlight you because I know. <laughs> hey, Colette, how are you? I Hello, am. everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Do you recognize yep. people here? I recognize a lot of faces on the screen. There's some new ones that I look forward to becoming friends with here. Very cool. I see somebody on the page just hit manager in like a couple of days. Is that right, Steve Yurjevic? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know That's if she's so cool. on there. She, yeah. Shannon. Yep. She did. That's so cool. Colette, thank you for the, the warm introduction. I miss these meetings. I'm playing with my ring light here, trying to get this thing set up so I don't look like complete garbage on the screen right now. Hold on. My, my, <laughs> I think that's okay. Do I look okay? Yes, you look great. All right. You look great. All right. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Annabelle. How are you? Annabelle's doing your hair. I remember those days. What's up, Annabelle? How are you? What's up, Steve? What's up, Esther? Brian, what's happening? Brian, can I get a uh, number five with, can we, can you do a large Coke, a large fry? I love when Brian wears those headphones. <laughs> what's up, Brian? How you doing, guys? What's up, Jeff? Annie Waters is here. What's up, Annie? How are you? Good to see you. Why are you so dark? <laughs> Why are you so dark? Are you sitting at, is it movie night? Are you in the living room just chilling? Cool. Tomas and Yenny. How's it going, guys? And then we got Amy. What's up, Fjorkowski? My Buffalo Bills buddy over there in Arizona right now. Right, Arizona? Am I right? Okay, cool. Sharon Gray, how are you? I've actually had a little bit of interaction with you on Facebook, right? A couple comments and messages back and forth. Jeff Myers, did I say Jeff already? I was looking at Jeff. I don't know if I said your name. Hope Tina's there. Sherry Sorensen, how you doing, Sherry? Nice to meet you. Dr. Seth Klein. We have, a doc Tina. we have a doctor on the team. What's up, Tina? How are you? <laughs> I miss your face, Tina. What kind of doctor are you, Seth? Where is he? Where is he? Chiropractor. Oh, very good. Very good. Hey, the rhinoceros is one of my favorite animals in the animal kingdom. Me too. It but, is my favorite. It is. Well, I can tell you obviously have a massive rhino behind you. So there's something going on there. And Lisa Hicks, you just you just get some sleep and some rest there, Lisa. We're just here to kind of put you to sleep. We're going to give you a lullaby. What do we got to do over here? <laughs> I think I said hi to everybody. Great. And yeah. there's 23 participants. Colette. There's a lot of people that don't have their face on the screen. Yes. And you're that's right okay. That. What's that? You're right about that. They have not turned their cameras on, but there's some very special people there with their cameras off. There's I Mr. believe Mark Langley. Mark Langley. What's up, Mark? Hey, guys, if every, anyone out there um, wants to really engage and be face to face, please put your camera on so I get to see your beautiful faces. Um, I know Colette's teaching this team, so I know she's got some Zoom etiquette stuff that she's been teaching. But if you can't turn your camera on because you're preoccupied, we understand. So anyway, Colette, and wait a second. L I S L E Meeker. How do I pronounce your first name? Lyle? Yep. There you go. You I've it. never seen I've never seen Lyle spelled like that before. It's, anybody... in the, it's in the dictionary that way. Oh, that's good. Did you put it in there that way? Like right in between two other words that began? Right. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, cool, Colette. I'm excited. I was driving home and um and uh 
I was just excited to be here with all of you today. First of all, let me congratulate all of you. I know everyone who's showing up tonight is a leader. There's over 20, there's 23 people on right now. And click, correct me if I'm wrong, but is the organization around 500 people at this point? Yeah, we're over 500. Yes. That's pretty incredible. Think about that for a second. 500, you're talking about DBOs? Yes. That's 500 times 500. That's $250,000 is this organization's a quarter million dollar organization. So you guys are, we're, we're pretty important when it comes to this company right now. I know they're recognizing Colette as the leader, but she wouldn't be the leader with any, without people that are running side by side and following her. So, um, and leading the way with her. So it's a, it's a team effort. Um, but Colette, my hat's off to you. You've done an incredible job. It's, it's amazing to sit back and watch you and Brian and Esther and Lacey and Lacey and Trish and, Mark and Steve and Lisa and everybody just, and Amy and I mean, Annabelle just clobber this thing. I'm just watching from, you know, from the social media distance right now at the time, but I'm just, I'm um, really impressed with what you guys are, have done so far. Thank you. Yeah. It's an amazing team. I'm just so thrilled to have everybody on this team and um, just looking forward to meeting everyone in Vegas at the launch. Very exciting time. You know, Michael, I'd like you to talk a little bit about the frenzy that, that goes on when we start building. Yeah, well, it's already starting. I know. Tell, it's tell, already tell starting. us a story about frenzy. Let's let's see how people, we want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you're creating it right now. You're creating a frenzy. You're creating that urgency to get involved now, get involved before that, you know, what I love most about this thing is that all the pieces aren't in place and you're still crushing it. I was in, I've been involved in the free enterprise industry. I'll call it that because I know that this uh, transact card business is not exactly a network marketing business, right? Colette, it's different. Correct. <clears throat> However, as different as it is and how they're changing, you know, this model that you have is, is different than traditional network marketing. At the same time, it's still the same because it's still people sharing an opportunity and a product with people. So we can call this whatever we want. We're building an organization of people. It's as simple as that. But, um, you know, I've been in the, this space now for, uh, you know, when you have to think about it, you're getting older, right? <clears throat> I've been I've been in this space since 2002. So that would mean, um, um, I, what was my date? You guys, some of you probably remember. It's like 21 years, right? October 19th. Oh my God. It's almost my anniversary. Yes. October 19th of 2002. I'll just tell you guys a quick story and then I'll answer Colette's question and tell you about the frenzy and how to create that frenzy. And quite frankly, there's nothing more fun in the world than being with the right company at the right time with the right product. <clears throat> if, if we're lucky enough to be at that point in time with this company, then you all have no idea how much fun you're about to have provided because it's not fun if you don't work. How much fun you're going to have if you if you are a part of the frenzy, if you make the frenzy happen, you make the explosion happen. But I've, I've gotten involved in uh, network marketing back in 2002, October 19th. And on that day, <clears throat> uh, a complete stranger about a week before introduced me to a man who made millions of dollars in home-based business. And then that man introduced me to another man who made who is a legend in the industry. I'm not going to say how much money he made because quite frankly, I've never seen his bank account. I've been in his house and so has Brian and Esther. Um, I've seen the the multiple Rolls Royces in his garage, but it wouldn't be right for me to talk about how much income the guy made. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter because here's what's more impressive than income. Lifestyle is more impre impressive than income. Freedom is more impressive than income. And I met a man at the when he was at the age of 62 years old. And at the time, he was done working and he wasn't retired with a 401k from uh, a restaurant he worked for for 35 years. He was retired with a massive bank account. Um, I call it an MBA, a massive bank account. But he was retired with a, an MBA, a massive bank account, because he got involved in the network marketing industry back in 1979. And it wasn't until 1983 when he found one of the companies that all of you would know the name if I mentioned it, but I won't mention it. And he was the reason why that company went from zero to about $4 billion in sales. And it was one man largely responsible for that company becoming the company that they are today. And that man became my mentor. Well, he taught me really, really well. 
He taught me really well. And we ended up partnering up in a business in a little different manner. I introduced him to the first video company in the world. We're doing video right now. I was doing this stuff 20 plus years ago, about 20 years ago, uh, before YouTube and Skype were who they were. And I introduced him to the owners of that company. He became another, another owner of the chairman of the board of the company. And then he mentored me and he taught me how to do what he did 20 years prior. And I listened to every word he said. I took note after note after note after note. I filled up journals that I still have in my possession at this point. The funny thing is I don't have to open one of those journals because I heard the man speak so many times that I could speak his story and tell his stories better than he can tell his own stories. As a matter of fact, when he would do meetings like this, if when he started to lose his train of thought because he was getting a little bit older, he looked and Michael, what was I about to say? And I always knew where he was going next. And he'd start to screw up his stories and I'd have to interrupt him and tell him, now, Richard, you blew that one. Let me tell your story the way it really happened. Um, but anyways, so when, when we were building that business and it took a little bit of time, so I want to compare it with Transact Card. Some of you have been after this now for how many months, Colette? Six? Four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. So we're getting close to six months, four and a half. Well, when I was with that company, I had to work that business for 12 to 14 months and then it didn't work. So, and I think this is a really important thing to share with all of you. I, I worked it hard for a year and Colette, I got my organization to about 500 people. And in that first year of build, I was doing meeting after meeting after meeting. Today, things have changed a little bit. Um, today, most of the stuff is done on computers and on <laughs> Zoom. But, you know, when I build this business, I like to build it belly to belly with people in my backyard. It's way more fun being with people. I don't care what anybody says. Try online dating, like real online dating. Like this is your date. You eat dinner together over the computer and then you kiss each other over the computer. It's pathetic. You need a real kiss and a real hug, right? Anyway, but... Um, so I was with that company for a year and believe it or not, I stopped after a year. I had 500 people in my group and I was freaking exhausted. And I called my mentor who was the chairman of the board of the company. And I said, Richard, I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's like, Michael, no, don't, don't quit. He goes, I always taught you sign up and don't quit. You guys ever heard sign up and don't quit before on this team? Never. Okay. Um, and I said, um, I said, Richard, I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm not making enough money. I, I might've been making Colette maybe 1500 bucks a month, maybe 2000. And at that time in my life, I, I wanted to get my life moving. I wanted to get more income. I wanted to find a wife, which by the way, I'm 49, still haven't found her. It's really hard to find one of those. And, um, and um, I said, I, I got to take a break or something. So he goes, Michael, he goes, take a little break and step away for a minute. So I did. And I stepped away for about a year and I started to do other things with my life because I'm not the type of person to sit around and wait for things to happen. I'm the type of person who makes things happen. Um, I think there's three types of people. There's people that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and there's people that wonder what the hell just happened. And I, I never want to be in that category of the third person. Um, and I certainly don't want to sit around and watch things happen. There's nothing worse than watching people have fun or watching people succeed. I'd rather pluck my nose hairs out one at a time. You guys ever tried to pluck your nose hairs out? It's very painful. Anyways, you know, you got one that's dangling and you're not home and you can't tweeze it and you don't have the scissors and you got to like pull it and your eyes start watering. Anyways, um, I try and keep things light and funny for you guys. Um, but anyways, I took a whole year off away from that company and he called me in March of 2005 and at the time I got involved in the mortgage industry, if you guys remember the mortgage industry back in 2005, everyone and their grandmother was part of the mortgage industry in 2004. And I was one of those people with maybe your grandmother. And um, in 2005, Richard called me back and he said, Michael, I said, yeah, Richard, because get in front of your computer. I said, okay. So I got in front of my computer. Now you guys got, can every can everyone here go back to 2005? Do you remember what life was like back in 2005? And I got in front of my computer and all of a sudden I was on the phone with him here on my phone. I had a flip phone back then. And then I heard his voice double like echo. I'm like, Richard, what are you doing? He goes, look at your computer screen, dummy. And I looked at my screen and there was Richard talking to me just like I'm talking to you. And if you guys can go back to 05, you couldn't do this stuff back in 2005. So you got to understand how weird it was for me to see my mentor 
on the screen about this big, about the same size as I am right now. And there he was talking to me. And I just said, wow. I go, Richard, he goes, we finally got it to work. <laughs> I said, you did. I'm like, I'm seeing it right now. Like you didn't have to prove to me that the transact card worked when you swiped it and you got Z points and you went and bought something in the store. He goes, we got it to work. And he looked at me, he goes, can you believe this? And he's got a big smile on his face. Like he was four years old. Can you believe this? And I, I go, oh my God, Richard, it's incredible. He goes, are you ready to come back home? And I said, and here's why I took that big sigh, that deep breath. Because I don't sugarcoat anything in this type of business. I'll never sugarcoat success to anybody. The reason why I took the deep breath was I knew it was time to get back to work. And when you really want to make a company happen and make it happen for you and your family, I hope you're the type of leader that puts everything you got into it. And at this stage in the game with this company, I hope you're doing that for yourself and for your future and for your family's future. Because something like this, like what we had back then and what did become wildly successful, but not to the nth degree, or all of you probably would have never met me. I'd probably be a billionaire right now. Um, but anyways, I took that deep breath and I go, ah. I actually pulled my hair out that night. Some of you might be able to see some of the missing follicles from that day. I can show you the back of my head, but I'm very embarrassed about the back of my hair. I'm like, when I do this, I can't even feel any whiskers back there. So I've got no hair back there. But that day, it was March 1st, 2005. And here's a little quick thing to share with you guys. I was one month away from signing a contract with the Philadelphia Eagles. Some of you on the screen have heard this before. You don't know me. Many of you don't know me on this screen, but you got to know one thing about me. I'll tell you, I love football more than life itself. All I wanted to do was be a professional football player. I was a Seahawk back in 2000. I met my mentor in 2002. He encouraged me to get in this crazy industry so I can make millions and be successful. And I put football kind of to the back burner. Those years are so fuzzy to me. I don't know what the heck I was thinking back then, but I did. And then in 2005, on March of 2005, John Harbaugh was the special team coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Now he's the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens, who has won a Super Bowl or two, Brian. I think it might have been two. Two. And John Harbaugh was about to sign me to a contract with the Philadelphia Eagles in April of that year. And I'll give you another reason why I went. Because I had to make a decision. I'm either going to go play football for the Philadelphia Eagles and make my lifelong dream come true at the age of 31 and get a second chance at my NFL dream, or I'm going to get involved with this crazy video network marketing company in the hopes that we can build it to a hundred million, 200 million, half billion, billion dollar company like my mentor once did with another company. And um, you probably don't have to tell you much more. I chose to build the business instead of make my lifelong dream come true as a football player in the NFL. So when I got to work in March 1st, I was about to build a frenzy. And you know what it took? And if you're taking notes, you can write this down. Jeff, Jeff Myers is probably laughing now. <laughs> I knew it. I looked right down when I said, if you're taking notes, write this down. Um, if it is to be, it's up to me. Truth be told, and this is not being braggadocious to with in front of any of you. I'm not an arrogant person. I'm an extremely confident person. There's a big difference. Deion Sanders and I are very much alike. A lot of people think he's arrogant. No, he's just plain confident. He, he says he's going to happen. He makes it happen. And I happen to love people like that, that, that manifest their thoughts and the words that they say. And in that day, March 1st, 2005, I said, I'm about to kill this thing. I'm about to crush it. I'm going to talk to every single person I know, every single person I meet, and I'm going to I'm going to do everything in my power to build a team of people so big that they're going to be telling stories about me in the future is how this guy built this organization of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions of people. And I put my head down, and in my first month I enrolled 37 people. I started the frenzy getting back to Colette's question. I enrolled 7 and those seven introduced it to a total of 37. Are you guys with me? Now, I can tell each and every one of you that you can enroll seven people in the next 30 days. And many of you on the screen, most of you have probably already done that. I enrolled seven. They turned into 37. That second month, I enrolled another five or 10. 
and the five or ten plus the thirty-seven turn into a turn into a hundred and eighteen. You guys are probably like, he's making up these numbers. Nope. These are the exact numbers. I, I had to second guess myself because I used to tell this story every day as Clint and Brian and Esther know, but I haven't told this story in a while. So I got to start to jog my memory. And if I forget anything, Brian, Esther and Clint will be able to tell you exactly where I was going. And then in the next month, I enrolled probably three or four more. Isn't that great, Brian? Just three or four more. But I had the 118 plus the 37 plus me. Don't forget me because I was the one keeping it together in the beginning. That's what leadership is. Don't look around and wait for somebody else to lead. You'll be looking for a long time in your business. Don't wait for somebody else to lead. They're not going to take the baton. Not yet. I'll get to that point. And it's a beautiful point I'll make here in a moment. That third month, we brought in 187 people. <laughs> I was so freaking excited. I only enrolled three, but my team brought in 187. Three. And they brought in 187 plus the 118 plus the 37. I haven't done that math in a while, but I'm imagining it was around three to 400 people somewhere in that range. And I remember my mentor saying to me, Michael, don't you stop what you're doing. He said this, he goes, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop until you have your freedom. Now, guys, I wasn't making oodles and oodles of money with an organization of four or 500 people. Colette's not making oodles and oodles of money with 500 people right now. But I had the vision to know what it would be like if those numbers kept exponentially growing. If they kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which I had no reason to believe that they weren't going to keep growing, right? Because they were growing, but they weren't growing with or without me yet. I was at every meeting. I was on every call. I was on every live webinar. We used to call, we used to call these lives. That's what we used to call these. These were Zooms today in 2023, back in 2005, 2006, when nobody knew about this stuff, we called them lives. Are you doing a live? I'm going to do a live. Let's go live. And from there, guys, things just started to roll. And the roll was the frenzy. Next thing you know, we had, I remember looking at my organization, all of you have back offices, right, Colette? We have back offices. You can look at your numbers. I remember seeing 500 people. And I was like, ooh, 500 people. And then the next number I remember seeing not too soon after, 1,000. And I was like, oh, my God. I was going to bed at night going, oh, my God. And I started to make good money, 15000 a month, 20000 a month. And I started to just go to bed at night thinking, I don't want to sleep very long because this is, this is amazing, this feeling of this thing growing. And I had taught everyone to leverage me and to use me and to put me to work and put the leader to work and then teach the leader to teach other leaders to have those people put the new leader to work. It's all about duplication. And I know you've heard that word before. And all of a sudden, I remember seeing 2,000 people in my back office. And then I remember it hitting 5,000 people. I don't know if any of you like are getting excited about this. Like I, I get excited just retelling the story. Maybe some people don't get excited about this stuff. I get really freaking excited about this stuff because I had the vision that one day it would be 10,000 people. And then it hit 10,000 people. I just about pooped my pants when that happened, by the way. And I'll tell you why. Because when it hit 10,000 people, I also noticed that that month I made $107,000. And I'm not promising any of you on the screen that you can make the money I'm making. And this industry is very frowned upon when a leader like myself comes on and tells you how I made millions and you're going to make millions too. Baloney. I can't do that. I can't do it. Can't promise that to you. I don't know let me take a little turn here and then I'll get back to the frenzy. I don't know what you're made of. I know what I'm made of. And I know that when I decide to do something, just consider it done. I know that when I want something bad enough, nobody can stop me from having it. And I hope when I say that, you're saying to me, yes, I'm just like that. Good. Then we're on the same page. I know that, um, that when it really comes down to it, if you find the right product and company and vehicle to get behind and you say, I'm going to lead this army and I'm going to do it. If you stick around for a couple of years, you'll never regret making that decision. You'll never regret it. Now the company I was with eventually went down kind of the bad part of the story. Like wah, 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 wah. it went down, but before it went down, I accumulated about $4 million in income. And if I had a clue as to what to do with money, we probably wouldn't be here. The good news is I was really good at spending it, really good at making it, and very bad at saving it and keeping it. 
And you've probably heard a lot of people in life talk about how when they made their first fortune, they lost it, spent it, missed, uh, misjudged it or missed, uh, misused it or whatever the case might be. But I'm, I'm beyond the point of kicking myself and beating myself up for what happened um, and for how it went down and how I reacted to how it went down. And I was stressed out and depressed and all those things. And that's a that's an old me I'd like to kick the crap out of right now, but I can't. Um, but the bottom line was I, pr I proved, and you guys are proving right now, that so long as the company's intact, they're in business, everything's straight up, everything's legit, which everything is here. And this thing is growing and, and the company's coming through on their promises. You ride this storm because it's going to be a storm for about two years for you. And then you only just pray that on the other side of this thing, that it's just going to roll downhill with or without you. When the frenzy happens, here's the good news. You can write this down. You couldn't stop it if you wanted to. <laughs> Nobody gives a rat's butt if you said, I think I'm going to do something else. <laughs> they don't care about you. Just know this. They don't care about you. They care about them, their family, and them getting a piece of this frenzy. And they're just going to be like, yeah, whatever. See you later, Colette. You want to walk away, which she never will, by the way. I'm going to take this thing to the moon. And when the frenzy happens, it's going to be so much fun. And it's going to start in November when I meet all of you. On November 13th and 14th, that's when things are going to get really, really real and really, really interesting. And then you're going to pat yourself on the back for sticking around for four and a half months and making it happen. So anyways, Clint, that was a way of me tying my whole story into your amazing question. How do you get that frenzy to happen? And frenzy happens by a bunch of you locking arms and saying, let's do this. And here's what I'm going to challenge you all to do. Do it bigger than you're doing it now. Do it more than you're doing it now. Do it better than you're doing it now. Work on yourself, work on your skills, work on your mindset. Take care of your health, take care of your body. You don't want to miss that point. Make sure you're sleeping, exercising, eating properly. One of the things that I blew in my years of building a business was not taking care of me. Today, I'm regretting that decision to not take care of my health. You can go all out 10 hours a day, two hours a day, whatever it is you're putting into it, and then do what you got to do and then come back at it again tomorrow. It's not worth risking your health over it. So I'll throw it back to you, Clint. I got to get some water. You're muted, you Clint. I don't know how that happens. I muted myself instead of, I muted instead of thinking I was already on. So once you start thinking big, you what? Think bigger. And then what? You think bigger than bigger. And, and then, then you think bigger than bigger than bigger. And then you think bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger and bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger. And if you think you're thinking bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger, think bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger. And if you think you're thinking bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger than bigger, you know, I do this every day. Today, just so you guys know, I had a heart attack. I'll kind of get a little intimate with all of you. I won't turn on the romantic music and take my whole shirt off. But it's almost my anniversary of the day they decided to crack my sternum in half. I'll never forget the day. I'll show you guys really quickly here. I was here on Friday, October 14th last year. And right here, I dropped to my knees. And who did I call? I called one of my best friends in the world. I call her my best friend, Colette Daniels. And I said, Colette, I don't feel good. And she said, Michael, what's wrong? She's always there to pick up my calls. And I said, I feel like I have like acid reflux or something. And Colette was so intuitive, she knew. She goes, Michael, get your ass in the hospital right now. And quite frankly, I didn't want to go. And I said, Colette, no. She goes, just go, just go to the hospital. So I got in my car, drove to the emergency room down here by my house in Santa Fe, New Mexico, called the Presbyterian. And um, I get in the hospital and they they hook the IV up to me. And and I go, I think I have an acid or agita. My dad, any Italians on the screen? My dad used to call it agita. I don't even know what agita is. I see Dr. Seth is laughing right now. Um, and I, I think I got agita and I don't even know what agita is, but I feel a burning sensation in my throat and my chest. And um, to fast advance the story, because I don't want this to be a sob story because it's not, but we're almost one year, Colette. That was 362 days ago. I called you and Colette helped technically save my life because I would have been stubborn. I probably wouldn't have went to the hospital. True story. She made me get in my car while I was on the phone with her. I was freaking out because I couldn't find the hospital and I get to the hospital and sure enough, they hooked me up to a heparin bag and they said, you're having a heart attack right now, Mr. Zappia. Craziest moment in my life. 
it was an out of body experience or it was surreal because I'm thinking I'm only 48. Like, is this really happening to me? And um, so had that happen about a year ago and um, October 17th, they cut me wide open, fixed my arteries supposedly. Tomorrow I'm going in for some nuclear stress tests because I'm not feeling very good. My heart's not feeling good. I can't breathe. I'm surprised I'm speaking at this pace with all of you, but you guys got me excited. Hopefully I don't drop dead of a heart attack on tonight's Zoom with all of you, which would really suck. I'm, I'm joking, by the way. Anyway, um, I don't know why I share all you were, that. Because you were going to say, I think about the bigger, the bigger, the bigger every day. So I think, about, so today... I made a decision after my heart attack and after four months of rehab that I'm going to get back into to doing some kind of work because my back was against the wall. I have a seven-year-old son. Any of you on the screen have responsibilities other than taking care of yourself? Anybody else? You got to take care of other people. So I got this little miniature person in my life that I'm responsible for. And dad had to go back to work and I didn't, I didn't feel good to go back to work. But I got in the car industry. I went and got a job down in Albuquerque, 50 miles from my front door. And... um and I, I went after it with everything I could. And I gave it everything I could. And I, the reason why I brought this up is because think bigger than bigger, right? Every day I challenge my thoughts on the way home. Am I thinking big enough? How many people did I talk to today? How many cars did I show today? How do I talk to more people tomorrow? How do I, how do I get my social media to reach out to more people tomorrow? How do I talk to my happy customers? I've got over 215 people I've sold vehicles to in the past seven months of my life. Incredible. I can't believe it. I sold 215 cars in seven months. I'm going to break 350 cars in my first 10 months in the car business because I don't do anything small. I do it big. And I say all that because I'm always thinking, what can I do more of? What can I do differently? What can I do better? And at the end of the day, it boils down to one thing, whether it's Transact Card, which I will be shifting my energy to in the very near future with all of you. Many of my, many, a lot of my energy will go in this direction. I've already enrolled about 40 to 50 people. I'm sure Colette has shared that with you before. A lot of people I put in this, a couple are staring right at me on the screen. I'm proud of them. Um, but it all boils down to numbers. How many, I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to look at this thing and you're going to be able to look at your numbers the same way we all look at our own numbers. How many people did I talk to? How many appointments did I set? How many people did I share transact card with? How many times was I out in public swiping my card for dinner and struck up a conversation with everyone around me and say, I can't believe this. What's so, what are you so excited about? I just bought this dinner for me and my family, but you know the difference between you and I, I bought it for my family and now I get to buy toilet paper and toothpaste and everything else at a 50% discount. So I want to buy you dinner. Can I buy you dinner tonight? Cause I want some more Z bucks. And I hope some of you on the screen are crazy enough to buy the person next to you, a coffee, a shake, a dinner. I don't care what it is. I hope you're that outgoing where you're not afraid to meet people and talk to people because it's those kind of people that are willing to do everything and anything. Think outside your own thinking. The problem is your thinking stinks. I got news for you. Everyone on the screen here, your thinking up until this point in your life has probably been a little stinky. I call it thinking stinking. You got to think different. You want to be successful. You want to make more, be more, have more, do more. Then you got to change what's going on between your ears and you got to figure out how to make this bigger. Colette should be going to bed at night. How do I turn 500 Jeff into 5,000? Help me, honey. You got to help me. You got to help me with this business. You know, when you go out for coffee or when you go, when you stop at the gas station, get a conversation, hand them a business card. My wife's involved with a business that every time you buy gas at the pump, you're going to save 50% on a website like Amazon in the very near future. You got to check this thing out. Okay. And if you don't have the nerve to do those kinds of things, then you don't want it. I don't have my husband say anything about this, just so you know. I know. And that's the problem. <laughs> no, because if he does, he's ruined it. I got to get oh. to those people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff is so funny, man. I miss that guy. Uh, good stuff. Anyway, is this, is this stuff helping anybody or are we just wasting an hour of our time tonight? No, good. I got a new face. Good. Suzanne Kitchens is on the screen. What's up, Suzanne Kitchens? How are you? Donna Demilio. Deme Demelio. How do Demeglio. I pronounce it? Demeglio. Demeglio. We pronounce the G in Italian. Trish and Lacey. What's up, Trish and Lace? I just saw like two miniature heads down in there. What's up, ladies? How are you? <laughs> What's up, Dub? I miss you, Dub. Proud of you What's guys. Up? I'm proud of you both. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to hear you good and see you. you. Listen and to everything you. he says. It's, it works. 
Trish, I heard everything I said the other week when you were teaching. I was like, I'm watching your teaching. I'm like, wow, she paid attention. <laughs> I, I never stopped. I never oh signed up for it. Uh, bravo. <laughs> you know, they say you don't make it in life. You can make it in life, but you don't really make it in life till people you mentor are better than you. And that was always my goal was to find people that out, not outworked me because I don't think there's many people that outwork me, but maybe outperformed me or reached more people. I mean, someone asked me the other day, like, you've been a part of network marketing for years. I said, yeah, I'll tell you guys a quick story. Um, I go, yeah, I used to hear my mentor say these words or someone say this about him. I said, Richard changed the lives of hundreds of people. And those hundreds of people changed the lives of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. And when I heard somebody say that about another man in this world, it could have been a woman, but it was a man. I said, I want to be that person. Anyone else feel like that when you hear those words? I want to be the person that's credited with changing the lives of hundreds of people who change the lives of thousands of people. Well, I watch what Colette's doing right now. And I just sit back and go, and I mean this so hardly, y'all don't need me here. I want to be here and I don't want to miss out, miss out on the fun when this thing takes off, like really takes off. But you already have a leader that can match me leadership and then some. And then you got Lacey and Trish, same thing. You got Annabelle. I'm not going to mention every name, Esther, Brian. You got a lot of people on the screen right now that have the blueprint for success in this kind of business. The blueprint, Jeff Myers. We wrote a book called The Blueprint. And you guys are learning from that blueprint today. I didn't, I did write that, but all that stuff that's in there, I learned from other people and I learned from experience. I'll take credit for writing that blueprint years ago with my team and the mastermind that we built, but I can't take credit for the things that we taught. The great thing about this business is you don't have to be the one who knows everything. You just have to be the one that plugs into the system and you got to have the people around you who know everything. And then you get to benefit from those people. And it's a beautiful thing. It's really beautiful. But really great to see you guys. Good to, Good to see, you. see you, my friend. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. I'm coming to sure Vegas you. soon. I'm, I'm going to take a trip to St. George. I got to give you guys a hug. Yeah. It's been too long. Well, we'll see a lot see of fun you things going on around here. We'll see you in I, Vegas. And Ve well, you'll see me in Vegas probably before that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good. I can't wait to see what's going on, guys. Yeah, anytime. Let's do it. Yes. You know, that's the great thing about this. And when Michael says that there's not... He doesn't know anybody that'll work more than him. He's not bragging. This guy is like a machine and that's why. I mean, he knows he is and it's that's kind of why his health is the way it is just because he doesn't know how to turn off. So he, he really doesn't know how to shut down. And when he said earlier in his story about how when he goes to sleep at night, eh, there's none of that. He doesn't sleep at night. I do now. I do now. He, he rests now. at night. He lays his head down on a pillow, but he does not stop. And so... Um, yeah. So many people on this screen already have been uh, mentored by him and that blueprint that he wrote and everything. We've all learned from that. And that's why this team is growing so much. Not just because of me, because I have leaders that were taught the way the system works. And um, I'm in, just so grateful that that was the case because literally the, the training that I did the other night on systems, I would have had no idea how to run this if he hadn't taught me about a system. And so I am just very, very grateful for him and what he's done and what he's taught these other team members on the screen right now, because we have about, ah, there's about eight of them that are just tipping on that vice president right now because they know a system. And um, I'm just, nice. I'm just grateful, grateful, grateful. And can't wait to see you, Michael, in Vegas. Can't wait to have this whole team gather there. Um, unbelievable amount of people are going to that launch in Vegas. And I'm so excited and we will all be able to celebrate together. And um, thank you once again for coming on tonight. Very much yeah. appreciated. We will have him on more often. But I once again, I'm kind of watching him for his health. I keep him in his lane selling cars because that's about all that... He, you know, like I said, he doesn't shut down. Whatever he's doing, he doesn't shut down. So keep him over there for right now so that he can get that job done. And then when we're ready to turn this on, he will shut that down and come here full, full speed ahead. But anyway, we will have you back again. Thank you so much. Thanks, Colette. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening in to all of you new people here. Just trust me when I tell you, you have a world-class leadership team. You can, you can look around the whole entire profession and you won't find better. You might find somebody maybe as good or a team as good, but you won't find anything better than what you have. And here's why I say that to you. Number one, it's true. 
Number two, those of you who are new that are a part of this, that are looking to them, you need to know and have the confidence that you have the belief in the people that are leading and steering the ship so that you can follow suit and be that person as well. You have to believe that you are working with the best and that will ooze out of your skin. The people around you be like, oh my God, who is this Colette you're talking about? Who is this Mrs. Daniels or who is this Lacey and Trish or who's Esther? Who's who's Mark Langley? Who are these people that you're talking about? I laugh. This is the last thing I'll say, Colette. I laugh when I think about the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who met my mentor, but before they met him, they had no clues to who the heck he was. He could have been a street bum that I took a, gave a shower to and put a nice outfit on and put him in front of the room to tell stories for two hours. It was how I edified him that made the people that came to see him go, whoa, this man's amazing. There's a lot to be said for the power of edification, and I hope you're using it properly. It's a tool that if you don't use it, you're blowing it. Hey, let me introduce you to my friend, Seth Klein. No, let me introduce you to Mr. Dr. Stephen, to Dr. Seth Klein. He's incredible. He's one of the leaders of this organization with this debit card that's going to change the banking industry and it's going to make people a fortune and you deserve to hear about it. And if you heard one thing in my voice as I'm saying this, it's excitement, it's enthusiasm. Excitement and enthusiasm is contagious. If I talked like this with all of you for the past 30 minutes, I would have bored myself to sleep. You can't, you can't talk like this when you're excited about something you're excited about. So the three E's, you're going to get all this. You already got it from Trish. I'm going to head out. Colette, thanks for letting me uh, chime in here tonight. Thank you so much. We'll do it again. Thank you, guys. You can come yeah. on. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. See you thanks, soon, Colette. Sarah. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. Bye, you guys. We'll see you soon. Ciao. Bye-bye.